So uh, I'm here with Jeff Hawkins. Uh, this is the guy that invented the Palm Pilot. Uh, we've, uh, in somewhere else in this show, we've seen uh, Mark Shuttleworth talking about his Edge phone. This is the guy that created the market that uh, Mark is now trying to sell into. He actually created one of the first um, uh, smartphones, the Trio. Uh, absolutely. So uh, fantastic to meet you, Jeff. I, I still long for graffiti on all of my <laughs> on all of my smartphones. <laughs> so, so uh, you're not doing Palm Pilots anymore. No. So, no. so, so, so tell Tell me about your, your true passion. My true passion, and it has been for over 30 years, is uh, neuroscience. Understanding how the human brain works, the neocortex, and building machines that work on those same principles. Um, so I, you know, the whole period at Palm and Handspring where that was sort of a, a, a sideshow. It was like a, an actor who couldn't get a job acting. They would go wait tables. Well, I couldn't get the gig I wanted in neuroscience, so I was building mobile computing. I, lo I loved it, I enjoyed it, I was totally excited about it, but my real passion is really brains, how they work, and building machines that work on the same principles. Right. So now you've been working most recently on uh, s uh, software that can predict the future. Uh, well, well, that's right. Um, we, we've actually been working on modeling, figuring out how parts of the neocortex work, which is the big wrinkly thing on top of your head, and we figured out a, first what it does, and then how it d does it, a layer of cells there, but we've been applying it to uh, problems where you can take streams of data, model the data, and then predict the future. So we actually have a product called Grok, which um, takes data from like windmills, and energy meters, and other machines, and it, it can predict future values, you can detect when anomalies are occurring, things like that. So we have that sort of business side to what we're doing. But we're here at OSCON to talk about a new open source project where we take these learning algorithms, which are essentially models of the neocortex, or a slice of the neocortex, and putting them in an open source project. Right. So that new open source project, you're, you're, you're launching it? What's it's that already all? launched. It's been up for a couple of months now. It's called NewPIC, the Numenta Platform for Intelligent Computing. It is, uh, it's the same code tree that we use in our product, so this is, you can go and see what we're releasing every day. Uh, we have an active community already, um, and so we had our first hackathon. It's only been a, it's only been going for a couple months, but it's going pretty well so far. We're right. pretty excited about it. So what what would I use that for as a as an open source hacker? There's there's a number of reasons that you might be interested in this. Um, people are interested in applying it to new uh, new problems. We're applying it to machine uh, generated data, but there's lots of other applications where people might apply it to. You might apply it to, in, in the same vein as we're using a Grok, you might apply it to financial type of data. You might apply it to um, um, new types of, uh, new sources of data that we don't we don't look at. We, we're focused on certain things. There's a lot of people who are interested in taking it and building more complex systems, robotics, vision, music, things like that. And, um, and and this requires extending the extending the algorithms and making uh, this a memory system, so making them bigger, putting them in a hierarchy, and so on. So the sort of people who want to apply to existing products, like I want to predict something. There's people who want to build new types of um, um, products. People interested in, in language, semantics, and so on. And, and then there's people who are interested in pure research. They're doing mathematical and sort of analysis of these algorithms. Um, so it's, it's kind of broad, you know, we're, we're talking about the beginning of building brains in software and hardware. And uh, that's a big, big field. It's going to be huge, and so it's just getting started. And I should mention, by the way, we have a number of people interested in doing hardware implementations of these algorithms. So some uh, big companies, IBM, Seagate, uh, some others who are actually have programs on the way. Um, because they're pretty excited about this stuff. So I'd sum that up as a, 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 a using brain science to work out how to handle uh, big data. It's one way of looking at it. Um, it's uh, again, I'm a neuroscientist, so I always want to talk about the neuroscience. But from a from a hacker point of view or a coding point of view, today what you can do with it is yes, you can stream fast data to it and it builds models of the data in an online fashion meaning every record that comes in it's updating the model it makes predictions you can you know and you can detect anomalies I'll give you an example one you know a simple example we uh, what we actually did and, and use it for is people are interested in predicting energy usage so a building consumes uh, energy throughout the day every it's up and down all the time depending on what the energy the building's doing what's going on and if you could predict what the energy consumption four hours from now or 24 hours from now um, it's sometimes advantageous. You could pre-cool the building, or you can. There's a thing called demand response where you can basically buy energy at different prices. Uh, so we, that's the kind of thing we do with with our product Grok today. It works very well at that. It's constantly learning. If the patterns in the world change, it adapts to it automatically. 
So what was it that made you give up palm pilots, which were awesome, and get into neuroscience instead? Well, I think brain science, uh, you know, understanding the brain, how it works, and building intelligent machines is actually a bigger, a bigger societal impact longer term than mobile computing. You know, much, much like, but you know, mobile computing, absolutely, you know, everyone in the world is going to have a computer in their pocket. It's a, it's a, 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 a process for democratization and education. So that's all great. But, you know, people don't have, most people don't realize yet how big intelligent machines are going to be. And it's sort of like starting the whole computing industry over again. And so we're, I, I, in my talk today I mentioned, we're like 1950s in computing. 1950s in computing was when, you know, they were just starting to build computers, they were just starting to be useful, but we had decades of, of advances still to go. We are starting to build intelligent machines that work on the principles of the brain. We're just getting started, and there's going to be decades, but where it's going, it's just going to be unbelievable. We're going to be able to build machines that are a million times faster than thinking than we are. We're going to be able to build machines that have much more memory than we are. They're going to be machines that can, can, can sense things that we can't sense. Um, and, and so it's, it's hard to know where it's going to go, just like 1950, it's hard to know where the computers are going to go. But intelligent machines, machines that learn, um, and the way the brains do, it's, it's just going to have an amazing impact um, on society and, 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 and the earth and, and, and humanity. So how do you think being an open source project is going to contribute towards achieving that vision for you? Well, first, you know, my goal has always been to, to, um, to make this happen sooner, uh, to be a catalyst for this. So, uh, and, and, you know, anything I can do to spread ideas is, is a good thing. Uh, I'm not in this at this point in time to make a lot of money off of this. I'm in this because I think it's cool, it's fun, it's good to do, it's important. Um, so I waited, even though we made this uh, te technical scientific discovery four years ago and we published it, I waited until we had real demand before we made an open source project. I, you know, I want people to come to me, and they did. I mean, people come to us and they said, I want, can you give us the, the source code to this? It's really cool, we want to work on it. I want to use my PhD thesis on this. We want to embed it. So when people asked us, we said, great. And of course, this is my goal from the beginning. So, you know, I, this is the, it can't help but, you know, putting these ideas out there, putting the code out there, showing how this stuff works, uh, some number of people are going to pick it up and go, this is great, I get it, and they're going to invest in it. And I think, that, you know, it's, it's not something anyone can own. It's not one thing, you know, this is like, it's like saying, who, who could you, could, could the computing industry be closed? No, it couldn't. It had to have lots of competitors, lots of ideas. And this is like that. This is not something any person or company can, can own. So it's, it's, it's got to be out there. Well, it's been fantastic to talk to you and great to see you here at OSCON. I wish you every success with the project you're working on. Thank you very much. Thank for you very much. It's new pick. And Nementa.org is the URL. Thank you very much. Thank you.